In March of 2022, we finally felt ready to jump back into international travel after a two-year hiatus. For our first post-COVID era trip, we chose the Dominican Republic. As Canadians, our prior knowledge of the Dominican was limited to the mega resorts of Punta Cana. But in researching our trip, we found another side to it, on the north coast. This area has a more laid back vibe. It's full of beautiful secluded beaches with the perfect conditions for water sports like surfing and kiteboarding that attract a mix of locals, expats and tourists like us. Just outside of the hippie surf town of Cabarete, we made our home for the week at Natura Cabana, a small collection of thatched roof cabins tucked under the trees just off the beach. The property is lush and peaceful, and every cabana is unique. We originally booked a cabana called Mexicali, but that only lasted a few hours until a fuse blew on our first night and left us without any power. The staff moved us to a new cabana called Caribe, and we stayed there for the rest of the week. This cabana faced the pool and was large enough for each of us to have our own bedroom, a definite upgrade. But I think my favorite feature was the covered outdoor living area. Natura Cabana is home to a couple of tabby cats who roam the grounds freely, and they spent quite a bit of time lounging on our porch with us, which made us feel very at home. <laughs> One of the first things that we did after our arrival was explore the coastline beyond Natura Cabana's property. There's a public footpath that runs along the coast just inside the tree line, which is a more direct route to take to wherever you're going, but of course it's more fun to follow the beaches wherever possible. After passing a few impossibly beautiful yet deserted beaches, we headed up through a grove of palm trees before popping out at Encuentro Beach. This is a major surf break on the Dominican's north coast. We'll come back here later in the week. Continuing on, we eventually made it to Kite Beach and quickly understood how this spot got its name. Kite Beach has strong afternoon winds and has become one of the top spots in the world for kiteboarding, an extreme sport where the kiter uses wind power and a large sail to be pulled across the water's surface and occasionally to launch themselves impossibly high in the air. Though this looked like a ton of fun, it also looked pretty complex, and in speaking with the locals we learned that it typically takes several days of learning how to control the kite before you can really get up on a board in the water. So we never did try kiteboarding ourselves, though it was a lot of fun to watch the other newbies giving it a try and to see some of the pros showing off their best maneuvers. The next morning we headed back over to Encuentro Beach bright and early because the surf was up. The staff at Natura Cabana arranged for us to be picked up at the hotel and driven down to the far side of the beach where a makeshift surf community was set up. I need to march on the front, otherwise it make no Chad and Liam had to prove themselves at a dry land lesson. Then they changed into rash guards and some surf dogs escorted them down to the water to the beginner's break. And they were put through the paces of some rigorous warm-up exercises before they were allowed to get into the water. Liam could not stop laughing. Finally, it was go time. That's Micah in the water with Liam and this additional guy named Toto popped up, introduced himself to Chad and became his personal instructor. Surfing is not easy, especially for landlocked people like ourselves who don't get to the ocean very often. But with some patience, Chad was eventually able to ride a few waves in, or so I was told. I had three 
three good ones and you missed them, I think, all. Really? There was three good ones. There was one when you were there and I did like 10 jump falls in a row and then I got up and I did one. I rode all the way in and I gave you the thumbs up where you were and you weren't there anymore. Liam had a little bit more success, perhaps owing to all the time he spent on a snowboard this winter. I'm not sure the skills really translate, but he did seem to have more trouble with his waves petering out than he did with actually staying on his board. There's a lot going on at Encuentro Beach and not just out in the water. Up under the shade of the trees, there's quite a sense of community. The population of surfers is what supports it, of course, and there are a number of surf school shacks you can walk up to to hire an instructor for a spur of the moment lesson. But there are also a couple of restaurants and food trucks some live entertainment, and even on Sunday mornings, an outdoor church service. We took one excursion away from the coast to the Dominican Republic's interior to visit the 27 Charcos de Damahagua. In English, it's called 27 Waterfalls. The waterfalls is a mistranslation because charco actually means pool. This is a canyoneering expedition that takes you on a hike up a mountainside that you then jump, swim, rappel, and slide back down through a series of connected pools and rivers. This is every bit as amazing as it sounds. Some of the jumps and slides are quite tame, but the largest is about 25 feet. Don't worry, there's a chicken staircase if you want to detour around it. On our trip, Mallory was the biggest daredevil of us all. She set the pace and the rest of us just tried to keep up with her. If you don't want to hike the whole way up the mountain, you can also enter the course of the 7th or 12th waterfall, but I really think you're selling the experience short if you don't do the whole thing. Also, while you can join a resort or cruise ship excursion to come here, there's a better way to do it. Hire a taxi to bring you to the park, pay the $14 per person entrance fee to do all 27 jumps, and then for another $20, hire a private guide for your group. You'll avoid being herded by cattle and waiting in line behind hundreds of people at each jump which we did until the very last waterfall when we caught up to a major tour group. Consider yourself warned. Hola. No, gracias. Chad went down with some mild food poisoning and Mallory was content to lounge around the resort with a book. We were in need of some cash, so Liam and I took a taxi into Cabarete to hit up a bank machine and explore. Once we had more pesos in our pockets, we got off the main commercial strip and spent the rest of our time exploring the beachfront. We made note of a few good-looking restaurants where you can dine with your toes in the sand before turning down a small alleyway and going to Love Pop for a frozen fruit bar. But we did save some room for our last stop of the day, Vegamundo, where they dish up the best gourmet waffles I've ever had. Liam had the Graceland with peanut butter, bacon, and banana, and I went for the Rio de Janeiro with ricotta cheese, guava, and mint. Both are highly recommended. We went into Sosua and headed for the Sosua Diving Center with whom we'd arranged to go snorkeling in Sosua Bay. 
Canyon? Canyon? No, it's other name, this is for dive. For oh, right. Okay, now, I think mine are a little bit big. We booked a trip to two locations, both of which were just a short boat right away. The first was Three Rocks, and it did have quite a few fish to be found, though the coral was not as pretty as can be found in some other Caribbean locations. I think this is the site that everyone goes to, and it was fairly busy with boats coming and going. We never did catch the name of the second location, but it's right next to a scuba site called Canyon. It's close enough to shore that you could probably swim straight out from Sosua Beach to reach it. There were fewer people here and probably fewer fish too, but the coral was more interesting and formed walls that you could swim through, which was kind of fun. Another day we went into El Chaco National Park to see the caves of Cabarete. We were met at the park gate by a tour guide who outfitted us with helmets and flashlights and led the way into the jungle. Three meters. But if you don't want to jump, I say that you can go down like babies for the stairs. Okay. <laughs> go down like babies. We visited three caves in total. A couple of them were like covered cenotes and you could swim in them if you chose to. Hiking between the caves, our guide told us the legend of Jungle John, who once lived in Cabarete and built a huge nightclub complex in the middle of the jungle. It sounds like there used to be some pretty wild parties out here. It was abandoned some time ago and wandering around the ruins now feels like being in an Indiana Jones movie. Guys, do you know something about stalactites and stalagmites? The cave that didn't have a place to swim at the bottom was full of stalactites and stalagmites, which were cool to see in person. After we left the park, we walked back into Cavarete, a route that takes you through a residential neighborhood and feels like you're seeing the real Dominican. We finished the day by having dinner on the beach at one of the restaurants that Liam and I had scouted earlier in the week. Overall, it was a very good day. Now we gotta get back up there indeed. On our last day in the Dominican, we wanted to try getting out to do some stand-up paddle boarding. For us, this meant finding a spot with some flat water. No way were we in a position to attempt heading out into the wind and waves on the ocean. Luckily, the Rio Yasica empties out into the ocean at a place called La Boca, and we were able to rent boards and paddle all the way down to the mouth of the river to see it. We rented our boards from a place called Rugama Tours, which is located on the bank of the river, a short distance from Cabarete. Our trip started out well enough, though I admit I was a bit nervous about paddling into the jungle on a murky body of water, because I kept thinking back to the legend of Jungle John, who supposedly set his pet anaconda free back when his nightclub in the jungle shut down. However, we soon had a more urgent problem to deal with. Rugama Tours owns a party boat that makes trips up and down the river, and I guess I thought they wouldn't send us down the river if the boat was heading back up at the same time. I was wrong, and we met up at probably the narrowest possible part of the channel. I at least had the sense to drop the camera and grab hold of the reeds on the riverbank to hug it tight in an effort to stay out of the boat's way and avoid certain death. Once we were past the party boat, we did make it down to La Boca and were able to see where the clear blue salt water comes in to mix with the muddy brown water from the river. At La Boca, there's a restaurant called Wilson's that we wanted to try. So after paddling back to Rugama, we hopped in our taxi and drove to the opposite riverbank. There's a boat that waits there for guests to shuttle across the water to the restaurant. A short ride takes you to the restaurant, which is just a small beach shack and a collection of open air tables under thatched roofs.
The menu is simple, consisting of a number of seafood options or a mixed plate, which is what we chose, accompanied by sides of rice and beans and salad. They also offer a DIY pina colada, which comes as a hollowed out pineapple full of coconut cream, with a pineapple heaped on the side and accompanied by a shot of rum. If you're lucky, you might be invited into the kitchen to see your food being prepared. It's a pretty unassuming setup, which is made even more impressive by the fact that this meal was the highlight of our week in the Dominican Republic, by far the best thing we ate on our entire trip. La Boca is popular with kiteboarders because it isn't as wavy as the ocean yet still has strong winds. Not only do you get the pleasure of watching the action while you eat at Wilson's, but you might even get an up close and personal encounter with a kiteboarder during your boat crossing. Jump, do jump. <laughs> I got him to do that. <laughs> That's awesome. We were only in the Dominican Republic for a week and it flew by. I think the combination of great weather and a long overdue change of scenery made it feel like the time passed in a blink, and before we knew it, we were on a plane back home to the cold and snow. The Dominican Republic surpassed my expectations. I was worried that it would feel like a very commercial and even somewhat bland destination, but I think that by choosing to stay outside of the major resort areas and arranging some of our own activities, our stay was more authentic and we really experienced some of the joy, faith and hospitality that this destination has to offer. Cheers to more safe and healthy travels as the world continues to open back up.